Good day to you. My name is Africa Mshape. I'm the author of a book, Freed by God, but Imprisoned by Culture. One of the issues that I address in my book is the subject of identity, how we define ourselves. I am of the view that the way you define yourself determines or influences how you define others. In the book of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 in the Bible, the Bible says, let us make man in our image and in our likeness and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and of every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So there are two aspects that are very important when you look at the issue of identity. One is the primary aspect, and two, the secondary aspect. The secondary aspect deals with issues of race, class, and gender. But the primary aspect deals with the fact that every person is made in God's image. Now in Genesis 1.26, we don't hear or see the term black or white man. So God did not say, let us make a black man or a white man. So the words or the terms black or white are social political terms. They are man-made terms that are made to serve a political purpose. God doesn't define us as black, He doesn't define us as white. Yet it is our democratic right to choose or to belong to these demographic boxes, as I call them, these labels that have been assigned to us. So each of us, if we are born with a certain skin color, you are assigned a specific box that you belong to. So if you are white, there's a box called white, and in the box there are preconditioned or predetermined ideas of what it means to be white. If you're born with a skin color that is defined as black, you're assigned it to this box, and within that box is a preconditioned idea of what it means to be black. And these ideas are made by others. You do not make them, you found them. So I deal with culture, for instance, I mention, I talk about culture, the fact that we are governed by the ideas of dead people. Those who founded the culture are the ones who governed those who followed the culture later on in life. But for us as people of faith and those who believe in God, we believe that the product is defined by its maker, not by those who discover the product, certainly but not by those who use the product. So God, he doesn't define us as black, he doesn't define us as white or, or colored or, or such labels. He defines us as man made in his image, made in his likeness. So to deal with distinctions of race or racism or racial polarization or dif differences and all the conflicts in South Africa and many other parts of the world, we must retrace our steps and go back to the manual, the Bible, the maker, and understand what was his original intention for creating man in the Garden of Eden and placing him in the earth. As I've mentioned, he doesn't define us as black, as in define as white. So if we're to address at this point racism, which seems to be, um, we seem to be seeing a resurgence of it in this point, if we do address it appropriately and eradicate it completely from our society, we have to retrace and go back to God's definition and see how it defines man. If we do address xenophobia as well, the same thing we have to do as well, to go back to the Bible and see that we are defined as men, not as black men, not as white men, not as colored men. Thank you. Let us pray. Father, we ask that we would open our eyes and see the truth. The truth is clear in your word. You made man in your image, you made man in your likeness, and you've given man certain responsibilities over the earth. Help us to be returned back, to be restored back to the original pattern, blueprint, which you've created us. Open our eyes to see the truth from error and come back to you, our maker. In Jesus' name, amen.